Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Romeo Pulenkwali. I'm from the Department of Higher Education and Training, and I'm not alone. I am with Ms. Risuna Maluleke. She will be taking your, uh, your questions or comments as you may have any clarity-seeking questions as I'm about to present about the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Before we start, I would like to encourage everyone to really, from the bottom of my heart, ask questions so that at the end of this presentation, I can have a surety and a greater understanding that you understand from where I am speaking from. So now today we are, like I've said, discussing the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. First and foremost, what I think is important is for you to understand where it comes from. Where does NSFAS come from? Now, this is a scheme that is initiative of the Department of Higher Education and Training. It is the responsibility of the Department of Higher Education and Training to always ensure that the National Student Financial Aid Scheme has enough funds within their coffers so that they can afford opportunities of learning amongst various institutions of higher education and training, namely the universities, traditional universities, as well as comprehensive universities, and the universities of technology, as well as the TVET sector. Now, when I'm referring to the TVET sector, of course, I'm referring to the technical vocational education and training sector. All in all, there are 50 with 259 campuses all around the country. That is, of course, within the nine provinces. So now, the mandate of NSFAS is quite clear and very direct. It is to assist people that are South African residents that do not afford large amounts of monies that are required by these institutions of higher education and training in order for them to be able to get the qualifications that they aspire to get. And remember, institutions, depending on their levels, they offer different qualifications. Like, for example, if you are a learner or a prospective learner that has the ambition of studying maybe at the University of Pretoria or maybe Swati University of Technology, you would understand that you would study different qualifications on different levels. Others would have degrees, others would have BTECs, others would have advanced national diplomas, others would have honors, others would have MTECs, and so forth. So now there are these students that really need to have or acquire this understanding and be able to be qualified in their own respective fields, but they don't have the financial means to do that. As a result, the Department of Higher Education and Training has came up with this idea of developing a scheme that is intended to assist all those that are struggling. And now when I say struggling, I'm saying that these people cannot even be able to go to banks for loan they cannot be able to go to other financial institutions and ask for loans that are intended for a getting a qualification so they fall under an income bracket according to the nsfas regulations of 350,000, not more than 350,000 per annum that is within a range of 12 months for example from january to december so if you know that um, your mother or father or your household income does not exceed 350,000 per annum, then I would advise that you listen to this information because it might help you. And now, remember we have different types of people. Now, I'm trying to lean in towards the idea of or the concept of people that are living with disabilities or that are physically challenged. But now, if you are like experiencing that challenge of physical disability or any type of um, um, disability, you need to understand that your household income bracket should indeed not exceed 600,000 per annum. And now you need to also fill in an annexure form when it comes to application process so that the NSFAS or the National Aid Financial Scheme uh, personnel can be able to understand that yes, you exceed the 350 income bracket, but you are a person that is living with a challenge or a disability. So remember the criterions, they differ as per the regulations of NSFAS. So it is very much important for the viewers that are looking at me right now and that are trying to forward the applications for NSFAS to understand these requirements clearly. 
And now you need to be, of course, a South African citizen. It is much more easier if you apply for NSFAS if you are a SASA recipient, but it does not mean that if you are not a SASA recipient, you cannot apply. You should apply, especially if you know that you are a South African citizen and you fall within the stated income bracket. That is, of course, I've mentioned before, the 350,000 per annum, and it should not, I repeat, exceed 350,000. So now, now, the applications are open right now, and actually, in fact, uh, they have opened on the 2nd of November. So people also ask questions around uh, how should I apply, what are the things that are needed in order for me to be able to submit an application. Well, we are here as a section within the Department of Higher Education and Training, of course, Career Development Services to advise accordingly and say, need not worry, if you want to apply for funding at NSFAS, you need to only have an ID document, you need to also have your proof of results and you, you need to have identity documents of people that are guardians or your parents and then you fill in an online application at www you can just search simply by doing what it is a google granny search that is nsfas on your google it will link you to a website or a domain area that can allow you to forward an application and open the process of applying it is very important for people that are applying for nsfas to understand how to use a computer and to understand how to type because you will be required to actually type that information i know when it comes to this documentation remember i've talked about your identity document i've also alluded on um, your metric certificate or any type of qualification that you have pending at the high, the level of qualification that you want funding for you should um, not it is not important now because of the COVID 2019 phenomenon for you to certify your applications only because of COVID 2019. On their website, I think they will be able to clearly indicate if they are taking away this regulation. Maybe if we have now as South Africans eased in and we are more able to manage um, the, the pandemic that is of course the coronavirus. So right now, if you are forwarding an application, it is not important for you to actually go to the police station and uh, certify if you have these identities because uh, the system um, is integrated with the system of the Department of Home Affairs and as far as can be able to really authenticate and see the information that you have sent is valid and is real and it, it does not have any um, misunderstandings. So you can go online and then um, uh, forward an application and attach those um, uh, documents that I have talked about so that your application um, can be considered. And I also think it is very important for a person that is forwarding an application to really uh, track the application as they have forwarded it. Because now it should move. It should take days, but it should move. And when it does not, I would really recommend that you contact us um, at Career Development Services so that we can be able to really have an understanding. Call them, have a conference call with them and you on the line uh, so that we can have an understanding of why does your application is always stay? Why is your application always staying on one, um, you understand, step? So it is very much important and critical for you guys to actually check if your application status is moving. And now, if it is not moving now, you know you can call us or you can call and as far as write them an email directly so that they can be able to assist you. Now, you need to also understand that NSFAS is handling large numbers of applications, so check your status. That is why I'm saying it is important to do such. So now, the other thing that is very important that I think you should be able to understand when it comes to NSFAS is when you are successfully authenticated and you are validated to get this uh, bursary or uh, financial assistance, you uh, will then be liable to get certain uh, benefits. And I need to also highlight that these benefits depends on the type of institution, the type of qualification, and um, your income bracket, you understand. Um, uh, they will differ from person to person depending on those uh, factors that I have highlighted. Now, um, if you qualify for NSFAS, of course, NSFAS will give you money for books, 
it will give you money for accommodation and in some areas i know students out there they really like to stay in their own private areas so please check with nsfas if uh, that option is valid for you because nsfas works with these institutions of higher education and training and it also works with accredited um, accommodation providers so you must check if they have um, a recommendation for you in terms of saying no if you are looking for uh, if you are interested in accommodation that is funded by us as a scheme maybe you can go to this address because we've got space there check and call them it wouldn't kill you so that you can have just the safe net and now the other important factor that is a benefit that you need to understand is personal care it will give you money for personal care and living allowance it is not much we understand but it is money that is intended to assist you and to ensure that when you are at this university when you are at this university of technology when you are at this achieved college you can at least be able to concentrate on your studies and not worry about uh, food and not worry about electricity and not uh, worry about rent so now and not even be worried about books so now that is why i'm saying these benefits are for your advantage use them that is why when you are applying and you are experiencing any problems it is recommended that you call us so that we can actually be able to uh, assist you these benefits can also include transport um it is very much important for you to understand that it will be calculated according to your proximity so if you are staying within a, a radius of 40 kilometers uh, they would do a calculation 20 kilometers they would do a, cal a calculation and eventually if you are closer to the institution then you would not be liable to getting this um what is this uh, benefit so if you are having any and i repeat if you are having any um, um you know uh, maybe questions about nsfas and how it works the information um, can be or the query can be directed to information let me quickly repeat it info at nsfas.org.za or you can call them directly on 08000 nsfas the numbers are 67327 67327 or simply put 08000 nsfas so now applications are now open and i need you to understand when you apply it is very much important for you to also consider applying for or having already applied for a space at an institution of higher education and training because it is useless for you to forward an application for nsfas and you get um, a funding uh, uh, from nsfas only to find out that the university did not validate your application. So make sure that your application is validated first or authenticated first by the institution of higher education and training, be it a TVET college, be it really a university or be it really um, a university of technology. Um, make sure that you have space there. And when we are still there on the, uh, the, the, the this um, phenomenon of, of, of universities, please also take note of this fact. For you to qualify for NSFAS for funding, NSFAS will also only fund you, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my English, NSFAS will only fund you if you have forwarded an application at a government-recognized institution of higher education and training. What do I mean by that? I'm saying if you are or if you have forwarded an application at a private institution of higher education and training, NSFAS will not, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say this, be able to fund you. But for example, if you have applied for UNISA, if you have applied for UP, the University of Pretoria, the University of Johannesburg, the University of the Free State, University of Cape Town, the Cape, Fe Cape, Cape Peninsula University, the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan, and all these other government universities, you can check them on uh, Google, the government universities, as well as the government universities of technology technology um, then you can be liable to actually get this NSFAS and I'm not excluding the TVET colleges if you have applied um, at a college that is uh, ending with TVET and it is recognized as a government college then you can be able to forward and qualify forward an application and qualify for this type of funding ladies and gentlemen or fellow people I think it is very also it is much um, important for you to understand that you need to take note of the application time yes it is open but it will not remain open forever and the, the very moment or uh, the very opportunity um, that you have to forward an application uh, at the earliest advantage or at the earliest stage for you I would I would say and advise that you choose that forward an application as early as possible so that you can be able to track it and so that you can you know uh, decrease your stress levels um, in terms of understanding that did you qualify or did you really not qualify?
this would uh, really um, uh, indicate um, on your side that you can manage your time quite well and it, it would it is advantageous to do that because even when maybe you are experiencing um, system failures, these things happen. Yes, we are living in a modern world of the fourth industrial revolution, but you know, technical glitches happen. So if you are experiencing or you might be in a situation of uh, maybe a system is freezing, a system is not responding, you would then be able to have time to know, okay, I can do it tomorrow, or let me call them and, and try to understand what is happening. And if you already um, have a qualification uh, within a university or higher qualification within a university. It is unfortunately um, that I'm mentioning to you now that NSFAS cannot uh, be able to fund you. It funds uh, people that are um, having or are, are first time, um, you know, qualification appliers. They are they are trying to get their qualifications for the first time. But if you already have um, a qualification, it makes it difficult for them to consider you because now uh, there are other people uh, out there in the country around all nine provinces that really needs this funding and that do not have um, a qualification. So if you don't have a qualification, you know that your APS point systems are direct and they speak to the type of qualification that you want to study at an institution of higher education and training and your subjects are also aligned to this type of qualification that you uh, will ambition to study at an institution of higher education and training and you have applied at an institution of higher education and training then without no doubt you will indeed uh, qualify and um, please do not think of um, ma making anything uh, that is unethical in terms of uh, providing uh, fraudulent documents when you forward to NSFAS because they can be able to do this and they might even buy you from using their system because of these fraudulent activities. So it is much more advisable that you really um, be as honest as possible when you forward an application. Now, the other important thing that I would really like to highlight on, especially when it comes to NSFAS, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure that our uh, Sooner is trying to answer your, your your questions if you are having any clarity seeking questions out there um, because I'm busy presenting so we normally work in pairs so um, Risuna Miss Manuleka will be able to assist you there because I see uh, comments are coming especially from uh, Mr. Clement so now um, it is um, NSFAS is, is yes we understand is created to assist those that cannot be able to study but again it has rules and, and, and you know laws so you really need to familiarize yourself with qualifications that can be funded or postgraduate qualifications that can be funded by NSFAS and you really to um, uh, you really need to understand um, uh, what do they mean by those type of qualifications that cannot be funded by NSFAS and those type of institutions that um, maybe if a student uh, decides to go to a private institution of higher education and training cannot really uh, be funded by NSFAS. You really need to understand uh, the basis of their criterion because I personally think and believe that it makes sense really. So now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope and, 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 and fellow uh, prospective students out there that are having ambitions that are, are highly motivated to enter the institutions of higher education, I, I wish you all today and I am advising that if you are really experiencing any problems, use our Facebook page to get in contact with us and use the platforms that are, are digitalized for you, especially on the side of NSFAS and the Department of Higher Education and Training and Career De uh, Development Services uh, to really uh, you know, um, make sure that you get all this support that you need to forward an application. And remember, I have said, track your application. And if it is not moving, just call us so that we can be able to assist you. I, I really hope, ladies and gentlemen, that I did justice with my uh, my fellow colleague online, uh, Risuna Maliloke, that we really did justice uh, to this topic today. And uh, please go and visit to visit their website, that is NSFAS uh, website, and check their frequently asked questions so that you can also check if you're experiencing a problem, how it was solved, or how um, they are saying it should be solved. And if you're experiencing any misunderstanding to our systems, please uh, call us so that we can say to you, yes, it is not attached, this document, your ID is not attached, um, um, uh, the ID of your parents is not attached, um, the income, uh, proof of income is not attached, or what is the problem, so that we can actually assist you there, and you need to be, uh, you know, technologically inclined in order for you to actually uh, be able to uh, process um, this um, application. 
And I know uh, people are having a lot of complaints about NSFAS, but really bear with them because they're handling quite a number of uh, applications. And I use as use career development services, use the Department of Higher Education and Training and other platforms that can be able to assist you. And I'm not saying that it's fair, it is not. But at the same time, I'm saying do not give up. Try wherever way and try to explore whichever means possible so that at the end of the day, uh, whatever problem that you are having is at least solved. Thank you very much and I hope and, and pray that you have a very beautiful day uh, from today moving forward. Thank you very much.